Good evening, everyone. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. I apologize for our late start. Uh, we're just going to give it a couple more seconds for everyone to, to come online. We just started the live stream, so just give us a few more minutes, please. It looks like everyone that was going to join us uh, via Zoom is, is online. So um, again, I'd like to welcome everyone and uh, call to order the Seneca Valley School District School Board Work Session of June 7th, 2021. At this time, I would ask that everyone join me in a moment of silence in the memory of the lives lost due to COVID-19 and in reflection to those who are mourning loved ones recovering from the illness or who have been negatively impacted during this time. Thank you very much. And usually we would have a special guest as our, I led the pledge, but because school is out, uh, you're stuck with me. So if I could ask uh, everyone who is able to rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Lisa, if you call the roll, please. Ms. Bradle. Here. Mr. DeTulio. Here. Ms. Harrison. Here. Mr. Hester. Here. Mr. Jacobs. Here. Mr. Neckel. Present. Mr. Peterson. Here. Ms. Little. Mr. Widdowson. Here. Thank you very much. Um, at this time, we'll move on to our information report. I'll invite Ms. Andresi to the mic. Good evening, thank you, Mr. President. We have two items of recognition this evening. Our first item is the National Merit Scholarship Corporation recently announced that Seneca Valley seniors are now graduates, I should say, David Choi, Zachary Garcia, and Ananya Rao are National Merit $2,500 scholarship winners. The merit scholar designees were chosen from a talent pool of some 16,000 outstanding finalists in the 2021 National Merit Scholarship Program. National Merit Scholarship winners are the finalists in each state judged to have the strongest combination of accomplishments, skills, and potential for success in rigorous college studies. And in your backup, you will find additional information. Our second recognition item this evening, Seneca Valley Juniors, Veronica Piminova and Daniel Spear were recently recognized by the National Center for Women and in Information Technology as part of their awards for aspirations in computing. Veronica was selected as a 2021 Central and Western Pennsylvania affiliate winner, and Daniel was chosen as a 2021 Central and Western Pennsylvania affiliate, affiliate honorable mention recipient. Awardees are chosen for their aptitude and interest in IT and computing, solid leadership ability, excellent academic history, and plans for post-secondary education. We congratulate both of them for an excellent job. Under dates to remember, June 8th, which is tomorrow, will be the release of final report cards and reports of student progress for all of our students. June 14th, next Monday, our summer school will begin. We will also be returning here for a school board regular meeting at 7 p.m. June 14th also marks Flag Day. June 20th, which is a Sunday, is Father's Day. June 25th will be the annual Seneca Valley Picnic Day at Kennywood Park. June 4th is Independence Day. August 2nd, school board work session meeting will take place here at 7 p.m. August 5th will be the Seneca Valley Foundation's Gift of Hope Golf Classic held at the Cranberry Highlands Golf Course. And on August 9th, we will return for a school board regular meeting here at 7 p.m. Unless you have any questions, Mr. President, that is all I have. Are there any questions for Ms. Andresi? Hearing none, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll move on to our drug testing results annual report. Uh, Dr. McKinley, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, 
This year was, was an atypical year for drug testing and a difficult year for drug testing, as you can imagine, through the pandemic. Uh, we did not do initial drug testing at all this year. Uh, we did do later in the year some random testing. Uh, also, we did not, uh, we couldn't do it during while, while all students were out with remote learning. So that coupled with other factors made it a very difficult year. That could be one of the reasons why our positivity rate did go up. So I'll state first that last year we had a positivity rate of 0.42%. This year it climbed to 3.6%. And again, various factors could lead into that, that higher rate. Uh, the national average was 3.3%. Um, I had conversations with uh, the gentleman who owns the, the business who we outsourced to and asked him various questions. We probably met for about 45 minutes and we're gonna have other follow-up meetings this summer as well, uh, more than with just me, but with the staff as well. One of the reasons why the national average didn't climb is because many districts weren't even in to do any testing at all. So their rates would have pushed it higher. So that, that's just one factor again. Um, one thing we also follow is our, our positives uh, follow-up. We, we, our policy calls for follow-up testing. So out of 45 attempts, we had four follow-up positives, which is greater than usual. That took us to an 8.9% rate. Last year, we were at a 3.8% rate. Again, 8.9 versus 3.8%. With follow-ups, the typical rate is about 20%. So we were still, still well below that, but again, it, it had climbed. Uh, out of our 15 total positives for the year, 14 students tested positive for marijuana, one for alcohol. And I, I really feel like this information backs up a lot of what Dr. Vital has been talking about recently, um, that, that marijuana usage has gone up in our area. Um, there have been people self-medicating during this time of the pandemic. And um, you know our, our numbers kind of prove that out. The good news is, and, and I'm happy to say that starting in July, we are going to get back to initial drug testing for the student athletes, the extracurricular activities and student drivers. We're gonna take the program back to and get it as close to as it was before with our testing. Um, so we will start that in July, work uh, through several dates and we already have those scheduled through Ms. Lewis's office uh, for the summer. And then we'll get back into the random testing once the school year begins again. So I'd like to thank the board again for supporting this program. I think it's incredibly important uh, and that we continue to do this. So I guess at this time, I'll ask if anybody has any questions. Are there any questions for Dr. McKinley? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Move to agency reports. We'll start with the vote tech, Mr. Peterson, Mr. Jacobs, please. Uh, Mr. Jacobs, it sounds like uh, you're on. I can start and Mr. Peterson can bring us home. Um, we have a meeting this upcoming Thursday. So most of my update is about a month old, but I will give it to you nonetheless. When we met last month, uh, we reviewed the audit report for the VOTEC, um, which was a clean audit report. So we were, uh, we were taken through that and asked questions related to that. Gordon Marburger, a JOC member from Mars, will not be seeking re-election in Mars. And so Mars will need to fill that seat and Bill Halley has taken over as the treasurer of the VOTEC. We also got an update on the status of the remediation of the water systems at the VOTEC, which I believe we updated this board on. Previously, all that remediation has been complete and all um, testing sites were within tolerable levels. And so that is good news. And the last piece that I'll add before I ask Mr. Peterson to talk about the award ceremony is that we will next month, I believe, transition our superintendent of record from Dr. Vital to Dr. Foley in South Butler. I know I speak for Mr. Peterson and the rest of the JOC when I say thank you to Dr. Vital for leading us through this year so well, not just here, but at the Votech as well. So thank you, Dr. Vital. 
Mr. Peterson, anything I missed? Certainly second that comment, Mr. Jacobs. Thank you for, for bringing that up. The only other thing I really have to um, add is that on the, the evening before our scheduled graduation, which became the evening before the evening before our scheduled graduation, which I think then became the evening before the evening before, the evening before our scheduled graduation, uh, the VOTAC held its award ceremony. They, they do not call it a graduation ceremony. Um, there were 289 students who um, were awarded their certificates, um, well spread over all of the, the, the uh, different uh, learning specialties that they provide. It was a beautiful evening. Um, Dr. Heiler arranged a very nice uh, occasion for the students and their families. And um, now we're off to next year, 289. Good number of kids going through there. Thank you very much. Are there any questions on the VOTEC update? There you go. Uh, the IU, uh, we did have our meeting. Uh, the biggest uh, uh, event that we had was we were able to award the HVAC project. It came in under budget, which was, uh, which is always, I should say, uh, a pleasant surprise. So uh, that project is moving on. The other issue that we talked about and that we have in front of us is the ballots. Uh, as you know, as I mentioned before, we're not doing an actual in-person um, event uh, for a convention this year. So we're gonna do these ballots. They need to be in by next uh, Tuesday. There's some confusion on, because of seats being open, how we have to vote on these, but I'd like to get some clarification from, from the IU uh, director from, from Wade Kilmeyer, and I'll get back to us uh, as soon as I can. And then next week we can take care of filling these out uh, and getting them back to the IU. So at this point, just hold off on these and we can talk about it more next week. Any questions on the IU? Hearing and seeing none. Uh, we'll move on to the legislative report and I will first apologize that I didn't prepare an update. Um, just with everything going on, and I didn't even ask Mr. Nickel to help me out here. Uh, we can push this until next. Yeah, let's push it till next week. We'll push it till next week, yeah. if you don't mind. Um, it's just been, of course, one of those weeks. Um, so we'll push that to next week and uh, give you an update on legislative issues then. In your backup, uh, you'll find the financial reports for operations, senior high activities, intermediate high activities, middle school activities, athletics, food services, tax collection reports, and capital project funds. Any questions, please direct those to Ms. Bergner. We'll move on to the public comment uh, portion. And we do have four speakers um, who would like to speak. Uh, a little bit of how we do things, it's pretty new to everyone. What we do is we give you four minutes to speak. Uh, come up, we'll introduce you, um, give you four minutes. When you get to be around 30 seconds left, I'll we'll give you a little tap on the gavel just so you know. Um, and to wrap things up, we're not going to. You know, close the hammer at four, but just to let you know. So uh, we'll start uh, with the first one on my list is Lindsay Baker. And she's going to speak on the subject of Susan Maori. Uh, she is a, her address is 220 Gate Dancer Drive, Cranberry Township, PA. Her elected school board member would be, if anyone knows. Oh, that's Ms. Bradle. Perfect. Future reference. There you go. Uh, again, you have four minutes whenever you're ready. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm speaking today in the hope that the school administrators and the board will reconsider what I would call the excessive punishment handed down to teacher and coach Susan Mowry. During remote learning, in a moment of frustration due to technical difficulties, Ms. Mowry used inappropriate language during a Zoom call that she thought was no longer live. I think we can all relate to the many frustrations of remote learning and insufficient technology connections and recognize that stress levels were elevated, frustration was prevalent and mistakes were made. Ms. Mowry immediately recognized her mistake and feels horrible for her choice of words. Disciplinary action was taken and she lost a week's pay and was banned from coaching for five years. She paid the price for that moment of frustration she was penalized a week's pay, which is a substantial financial hardship for any family at any point in time. However, it is especially hard on a single mother in the midst of a global pandemic. During this very difficult year, while most communities were rallying behind their teachers, 
Seneca Valley chose to institute a harsh punishment. I greatly appreciate all of the coaches and everything that they sacrificed their time and energy to build up our athletic community. I'm especially grateful for the positive experience that our daughter had while a member of Coach Mowry's cross country team. Our daughter, Morgan, was a timid seventh grader who joined the cross country team and tried running for the first time last fall. Coach Mowry welcomed her, coached her up and led her to a very successful season. Morgan loved the sport, the coach and the girls on the team and everything that came with it. Coach Mowry created an atmosphere that emphasized teamwork built friendships, promoted a strong work ethic, created a passion for competition, and encouraged community service. These are all things that Morgan learned from being a part of Ms. Mowry's team, and they're all attributes that she will take with her and continue to develop the rest of her life. This foundation is far more important than winning the race, and we have Coach Mowry to thank for laying the groundwork to develop strong, confident, competitive student athletes. Ms. Mowry is a genuine person, an exceptional teacher, and a coach that athletes truly love. It is disappointing that our district has sacrificed the best interest of our children by banning her from coaching. My hope is that you will look at this situation with grace and recognize that our student athletes deserve to have their coach back. Yes, she made a mistake, and we all have. She owned it and literally paid the price for it, so why are you punishing the Seneca Valley student athletes? Thank you very much. Our next speaker uh, is Morgan Baker. This is on the punishment of Ms. Mowry as well. Again, uh, her address is 220 Gate Dancer Drive, Cranberry Township, and Ms. Brady is her, her board member. Four minutes, whenever you're ready. Hello, my name is Morgan Baker, and I am in eighth grade at Ryan Goyer Middle School. I have brought an issue to you concerning a seventh grade teacher named Ms. Susan Mowry. Ms. Mowry is my, was my English teacher this year, along with my former cross country coach. However, this track season, it was brought to my attention that Ms. Mowry would not be coaching this year or for the next five years. I am writing this letter because I believe that this is not right. I know that Ms. Mowry made a terrible mistake, but she did own up to it. I also understand that she does deserve a consequence, but I think this is a bit extreme. As I mentioned, Ms. Mowry was my coach last year. Cross country was my favorite thing every single day. It was something that got me through the school day. Knowing that I got to go to cross country in three more periods was wonderful. However, that was not how my track season was. I dreaded going to practice and meets. I had a countdown of days until it was over. This is not because of the sport, but it was the fact that I missed Miss Mowry. I missed her cheering for me right when I was about to give up. I missed her extremely useful advice. I missed her as my co coach. I would like to inform you that Miss Mowry is now coaching the Mars Middle School track team. She was doing what she loves, coaching. Therefore, you are not punishing her, you are punishing us. The whole cross country team is who you are punishing, not Miss Mowry. We are the ones that get to watch our coach coach the other team. We have to watch other kids get advice from our coach. We have to hear her cheer for the other team. It is awful. That is why we have come here today. We, are, we had a miserable track season and this made us very angry. I most likely will not be taking part in track or cross country ever again if it doesn't change. In five years, we will all be graduating or have already left Seneca Valley. Therefore, as of right now, I will never have any desire to participate in any school sport again. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll move on to our third speaker, uh, Margie Riggle. Margie. And speaking on Coach Maori, and her address is 164 Perry Highway Harmony. I'm assuming it's Lancaster Township. Uh, Jackson. Jackson. Okay, so that would make Ms. Mr. Widdowson, your board member. Go ahead. Okay. Four minutes. Um, my daughter, Grace, and her friends from her cross country team have created a petition, and it can, uh, currently has 135 signatures, as well as many thoughtful comments in favor. Not bad for a first timer. Um, she did provide a copy of that. Um, I have advised her um, never to start a fight without a good reason, but I will also never intrude on her desire to stand up for what she believes in if her conscience tells her something is wrong. 
I'm deeply proud of my daughter for taking that first step in standing up for Miss Mallory. And I, along with so many others, are following her lead um, to do the same. As a parent of a child who was, whose life was profoundly enriched by Mrs. Mallory, it breaks my heart to think that she would no longer be able to have her as a coach, um, not only the coming year, but for the entirety of her high school career. This decision will negatively impact not only the current cross country athletes, but possibly hundreds of other children who will need the exact type of mentorship as Miss Mallory provides, as my daughter needed and as she continues to need. There's of course many styles of teaching and coaching and different kids will always gravitate towards different styles, but Miss Mallory um, has exactly the same type of teacher teaching and coaching that my kid needs. Um, my daughter had Miss Mallory for ad advanced English last year. And when I would ask her what her hardest class would be, which she would usually say English, um, oddly enough that when I would ask her what her favorite class was, it was also advanced English. Um, not only does she motivate the kids academically, Miss Mari has found a way of interacting with the kids day to day that makes them feel seen and heard. Uh, not exactly as equals, but not as little kids. She truly sees them and respects them for the young adults they are, and they respect her for that. At many cross country meets, Miss Mallory has cheered on her athletes so vigorously that she would go hoarse for days afterward, cheering for kids, my kid. I think that is just absolutely amazing. She pushes these kids to strive for their very best and then continue to set goals for themselves to achieve. At the same time, she instills life lessons such as the idea that being the very best is not the most important thing, that exercise for pleasure and fitness is absolutely more, and more significant than winning first place and to respect and listen to their bodies. This will serve them well, regardless of pursuing collegiate sports or simply enjoying a healthy lifestyle. Beyond academics and athletics, cross country is also where my, my kid first met her very best friends. The environment created by Coach Mowry is exactly what is essential to allow these kids to come out of their shells. Socially, these kids needed each other. And had it not been for the atmosphere of kindness, acceptance, and security, they may have never created the connections they have and friendships, which I truly believe will last a lifetime. Um, although my daughter will be moving on to high school team next year, she does hope to see Miss Mowry out there cheering her on. I do believe it would be an absurd loss to so many kids to not have the opportunity to be coached and strengthened by Miss Mowry. The past two years have been an incredible amount of put an incredible amount of pressure on the teachers and the entire administration. We as parents somehow expected our kids to get the same level of instruction, attention, and development as we have always received in such a great district. Um, during, and we expected that during a global pandemic. The teachers were suddenly expected to be the same old terrific edu educators and manage their own family life and pressure at home while simultaneously becoming Zoom experts and engage kids who are no longer sitting in their classrooms. I'm certain there have been far worse words uttered under far less ridiculous circumstances. When I asked Ms. Mowry why she wouldn't be coaching, she humbly and thoroughly explained to me exactly what she had done and all of her past errors and what the consequences of her actions would be. Ms. Mowry, Mowry has absolutely made mistakes and I completely understand and support the need for accountability. Although she expressed to me her regret in her actions and that she has already accepted the decided upon consequences, I would like to urge the board to reconsider the decision to bar her from coaching after such an ex extended amount of time. She has already lost a week of pay and was not allowed to coach or volunteer for the end of the 2021 season. And this seems punishment enough. Miss Mallory has inspired so many kids in so many different ways, and I completely trust her with my daughter's admiration. Thank you very much. Our final speaker is Connie Kettler. Her address is listed 702 Seth Drive in Cranberry Township. And that would make Anyone know who that would make her board member? We will look that up. Or do you know it? I, I don't know. Okay. I'm in Cranberry Heights. I don't know if that helps anybody. Okay. Then Mr. Nickel, uh, again, four minutes. Okay. Oh. Funny, family, nurturing, supportive, passionate, caring, outgoing, adventurous, confident, humility, motherly, open minded, unique, receptive, youthful empowering, strong, dedicated, positive, loud, encouraging, motivating, helpful, welcoming, kind, 
uplifting, resilient, authentic, genuine, passionate. As a mom, I would love to hear those words used to describe my children. As a supervisor, I would love to hear those words used to describe my employees. As a Seneca Valley taxpayer and parent of Seneca Valley students and student athletes, I would hope those are words that describe the faculty, staff, administration, and coaches at Seneca Valley. Where did I get this list? I pulled several boys and girls from junior high to varsity. Many of these words were used more than once, but there are 30 different words on this list that those student athletes gave me describing Coach Mowry. Some of them, of course, couldn't give me just one word. They had to give me a sentence. Believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. Gets the team moving in a positive way that they can relate to. Expects your best and doesn't quit until you give your best. I'm going to add a word to that list. I think somebody else said it, human. As humans, we are not perfect. We make mistakes. There are consequences for our mistakes. She's paid the consequence. And as I think it was Morgan that said, in the reality, Susan Mowry is still coaching. She is still positively impacting the lives of our next generation. She is still empowering student athletes. She is still molding student athletes to be their very best and pushing them to be their very best. She is still believing in that kid who doesn't believe in themselves. The, the, the sad part is, the unfortunate part is, she's not doing that here at Seneca Valley. You guys have given that gift to another district. You've taken it away from our student athletes and you've given that gift to another district. As she said, you're not punishing Coach Mowry. Coach Mowry is still doing what she loves, what she was born to do. She's still coaching. She's still, she's still doing all of that stuff. She's just not doing it for our athletes. And as a parent who's had children run for her, spend time at her home, um, and, and have, have watched them mold her children into who they are, it's unfortunate that that will not continue at Seneca Valley. Um, I've had the unique experience. I'm in education and healthcare during this COVID. And in both fields and across society, all we hear is have patience and give grace. We hear that when we get communication from the Seneca Valley administration in the emails that are sent to us, we get it from your teachers that are sending us information on Teams or in emails. Please have patience. This is new to us. Please have patience. Um, we, we are learning just like you are. We are learning technology. We're learning technology as we're doing it, just like you are. Please have patience with your kids. And boy, as a parent, did I appreciate that because there were times I wasn't very patient with my kids. So you're asking us as parents to be patient and to give grace. I would like to see lead by example. I would like to see you give grace to someone who made a mistake, fully owned it. She was in that office. It, before, unfortunately, I think the phone call came first. She was in that office waiting to talk to her principal, knowing what she did. And it was an accident. She thought her Google Teams or whatever was off and it wasn't. Um, I think technology, um, has been a challenge for everyone. I think we can all relate to that. Um, and I just, I think we need to reevaluate. did the punishment meet the crime? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. Um, as you know, this is a personnel matter that we're not able to discuss uh, out and open. However, we will take all the comments into consideration um, you know, when we can in executive session. So but thank you all for coming. Uh, it's always great to have speakers. We'll move on. We do have a small action item uh, agenda for today. So at this point, we'll move into that. And uh, we'll start off with, uh, I'd like to seek a motion to approve the following items, the labor contract, to approve the labor contract between the Seneca Valley Educational Support Personnel, SDESP, and the Seneca Valley School District effective July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2026 as providing your backup and the minutes to approve the minutes from our meeting on our work session meeting of May 3rd, 2021 and our action meeting on May 10th, 2021 as providing the backup. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Is there a second? second. Thank you, Mr. Hester. Any discussion or questions on these items? Hearing none, Lisa, if you call the roll, please. Ms. Whittle. Mr. Nickel. Yes. Ms. Harrison. Yes. Ms. Bradle. Yes. Mr. Jacobs. Yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Widdowson. Yes. Mr. Hester. Yes. Mr. DeTulio. Yes. Motion carries with eight in the affirmative and one absent. Thank you very much. 
We'll move on uh, in your backup. You will find that you have the treasury's report. Also, you'll have the general fund bills and a grand total of $3,335,387.61. And the construction fund bills, these, uh, this backup is also, this is also included in your backup. And the grand total amount of $2,596,241.52. If you have any questions on any of those items, please direct those to Ms. Bartner. We'll move on to administrative action and Mr. Nickel, please. Certainly, Mr. President. Uh, next week, I will be making the motion with regards to the following four items. The first is the Jason G. Werley Memorial to approve the Silver Linings Project proposed by the Seneca Valley Foundation to memorialize the late Mr. Jason G. Werley, uh, the Seneca Valley Foundation trustee, or one of them, and a former Seneca Valley School Board director. A repeated sentiment of Mr. Werley was that he always looked for the good in situations, the silver lining. The project will fund the installation of three silver benches to line the courtyard of the senior high school so that students, staff, and the community can be reminded of the positive outlook Mr. Werley so firmly believed the project will be at no cost to the district. Uh, detail on that is in your backup. Second is the Head Start Agreement. That would be for uh, to approve the renewal lease agreements with the Butler County Children's Center Incorporated doing business as Early Learning Connections for the operation of a Head Start program at Rowan Elementary for the 2021-2022 school year. Um, Dr. McCarty and Ms. Burtner, I believe, are... Uh, Champions of that, if that's the right way of saying it. Uh, detail on that is in your backup. Uh, the third item is for our pre-K counts agreement. Uh, that is to approve the lease agreement with Butler County Children's Center, Inc., doing business as early learning connections for the operation of a pre-K counts program at the Conneconessing Valley Elementary for the 2021-2022 school year. That uh, uh, detail on that is also in your backup. And finally, to uh, designate uh, our PSBA voting delegates, to appoint Mr. Eric DiTullio as a voting delegate for the PSBA Delegate Assembly meeting on Saturday, October 23rd, 2021. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Nickel. Is there any questions or comments on any of these items? Hearing and seeing none, uh, we'll move on to the instruction action. Ms. Harrison, please. Thank you. Next week, we'll look to approve the following instruction action items. The first is the 2021 graduates approved the list of Seneca Valley graduates for 2021 is provided in the backup. Second is conference, approved conference is provided in the backup. Third item is club status, approved the club status for the bass fishing club at no cost to the district and under the supervision of Mr. Matt Durst, our GMS teacher is provided in the backup. Fourth is Center for Community Resource Agreement, approve the Student Assistance Program Agreement for the 2021-22 fiscal year with Butler County Human Services Center for Community Resources, CCR, for Dr. Roberts and providing the backup. Fifth item is Pittsburgh Art Region Agreement, approve the Affiliate Partner Agreement with Young Artists and Writers Incorporated for administration of a Scholastic Art and Writing Awards regional program for the term of July 1st, 2021 through June 30th of 2022 for Dr. McKinley and provided in the backup. <clears throat> Sixth item is DePaul School for Hearing and Speech Agreement. Approve the DePaul School for Hearing and Speech Agreement for professional services for the 2021-22 school year for Dr. Roberts and Mr. Miller is provided in the backup. The last item is concerning two grants. The first grant, grant permission to apply for and disperse if approved the Isabel P. Rucker Fund and NCTM grant for the amount of $3,000 for the enhancing student mathematics learning through the use of tools and technology for Dr. Pilano and provided in your backup. And the second grant is accept the Highmark Foundation grant in the amount of $7,500 for the Conoquinesson Valley Elementary School to be used towards health and wellness initiatives that prov promote a positive school climate. Thank you, Ms. Harrison. Is there any question or are there any questions for Ms. Harrison? Hearing and seeing none, we'll move on to business finance action. Mr. Jacobs, please. Thank you, Mr. Tulio. Next week, we'll look to approve the following business finance actions. First relates to budget transfers, approve the budget transfers, which are included in the backup. Second item relates to the Act, Act 1 resolution, approve the 2021-22 Homestead and Farm Fit Exclusion Resolution per Act 1 Taxpayer Relief Act, also included in the backup. 
Next item is, relates to Act 511 taxes. Approve reenactment of the following Act 511 taxes. The flat rate occupation tax of $10, the earned income tax of 1%, and the real estate transfer tax of 1%. Next is the summer actions, authorize the administration to approve the following. Year-end budget transfers, outreach, partnership of technology agreements, June and July bills. Next, next week we will be looking to approve the 2021-22 budget, adopt the annual budget for 2021-22 in the amount of $145,712,582 with a 2.56 mil or 2% increase. That is included in your backup. The next item is related to liability insurance. Approve the sanction of the following groups to work on behalf of the Seneca Valley School District and intention to provide that the district's liability insurance covers these groups for the 2021-22 school year. PTA, PTO, SV Boys Lacrosse, SV Indoor Track and Field, SV Ice Hockey, SV Inline Hockey, SV Slow Pitch Softball, SV Bowling, SV Competitive Cheer, SV Ultimate Frisbee, JROTC, After Prom Committee, Booster Groups, Seneca Valley Foundation, and all board approved student clubs. Next item is a booster group resolution. Approve the booster group recognition resolution for the 2021-22 school year as included in your backup. We'll also next week approve ticket prices, approve athletic ticket prices for the 2021-22 school year as follows. Football reserve seating, $8 per entry. Football pre-sale adult general admission, $6 per entry. Football pre-sale student general admission, $4 per entry. All football tickets at the gate, $6 per entry. All other sport adult general admission, $5 per entry. All other sports student general admission, $3 per entry. The next item will be our facility rental fees. Approve the facility rental fees for the 2021-22 fiscal year as included in the backup. Next item relates to insurance premiums. Approve insurance premiums for the 2021-22 school year provided by First National Insurance Agency. That backup will be provided this week. Next item is equipment disposal. Approve the disposal or donation of the following. Two obsolete commercial pizza ovens, swim equipment, swim timing equipment. And the last item relates to change orders. Approve the construction change orders for the Ermancrest Elementary and Middle School as included in the backup. And that will end the motion next week, Mr. Tulio. Thank you very much, Mr. Jacobs. Uh, I hate to do this here. Are there any questions for Mr. Jacobs after that long reading? Hearing and seeing none, lucked out. Uh, we'll move on to uh, personal action. Mr. Whittison, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Next week, we'll be looking for a motion to approve the resignations, the appointments, leaves, contract renewal, Stipend, retirement, and the memorandum of understanding is provided to board and backup and having been discussed in the executive session. Thank you very much. We'll move on uh, to the next item on our agenda, which is communications. And we are in receipt of 11 pieces of communication. Uh, it's all in the backup. Uh, I'm sure that we've all reviewed it. Um, and we responded accordingly. Before we look to a motion to adjourn, wanted to bring up that Next week, we will be uh, discussing a resolution for passage that would retire the, uh, the Native American head and all Native American uh, related imagery from the Seneca Valley School District. Um, it, we will have some discussions on it. The resolution is still in um, draft form and then we're gonna make some changes to it. Uh, this is something that's being done uh, because the people that this was meant to honor and started honoring uh, back in the 60s when it was um, developed, have now asked us not to honor them in that way. No different than if, uh, say, the family of, of Ryan Gloyer came to us and said, we don't want having a school named after our, our family member anymore. So it's something I think that it, under the circumstances we're, we're obligated to do. So we'll have that resolution uh, for discussion. We encourage that anyone have questions, please feel free. Uh, contact me. Um, we always send a, an email to the board, but my contact information is also on the website. If you wish, just give me a call and, and we can discuss it further. With that, is there any other item that needs to be brought before the board for discussion? 
hearing, seeing, hearing and seeing none, I'd look for a motion to adjourn our meeting. Thank you, Mr. Nickel. Ms. Witteson, was that a second? <laughs> with, with, with the motion and a second, uh, all those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. All those opposed nay, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone.